Alright, so I'm pretty laid back. Um, I mixed in pretty good with the guys. Um, I don't know, Brandon was pretty tense when I, I guess here, but like he, I guess he was talking about earlier, and he's learned his patience, and sometimes you gotta be patient, like when you're rubbing out a fat deuce out. I grew up with Craig, and then about a year before I got out of the Marines, I knew that I wanted to pursue music, so I drove to Nebraska, and drove Craig out here on a giant trailer. <laughs> And then, uh... With his truck behind it, because it's so hairy thing. Right. <clears throat> and we ended up getting tattoos from Hybrid Tattoo in Woodbridge, and Morgan just happened to be the, the artist that we landed with, and we were talking about problems with the vocalist that we were having at the time. And he told us about the guy that he knew, Sam, <clears throat> said that he would fit our style well, and that he was good and into it, and was looking to move to California, because we were looking to move to California at the time. So he hooked us up with Sam, and, uh, we invited Sam over to jam. So we started asking around. Craig was working with Curtis at Best Buy, and uh, yeah. so we got kind Curtis. Of a, I heard it. Yeah, it's kind of a funny thing how I came to be because uh, you know I had I had, had aspirations to go to California in the first place to uh, to do some entertainment. Uh, yeah, I was working with the Quang over at Best Buy back when he was baby faced. Yeah, and uh, and he's like, yeah, well, you know, we need a bass player, and you're looking to move out to California anyway, and why don't you just jump ship with us and play some gigs on the way out, play bass temporarily. I was like, you know, I do my own recording, you know, and then that's actually how I gained an interest. I was like, well, why don't I just play bass on the demo? And then we, we cut a, we cut some tracks at, in the barracks um, at Quantico. I was, I was on restriction. I got a little <laughs> bit of trouble, and I couldn't leave the barracks for a month. So, so we basically brought all of his recording gear in, and I liberated a few mattresses from the empty Yeah, that didn't rooms. suck at all, moving that stuff in and yeah. out. By the made way. a mini studio in the basement um, behind yeah. my CO's back. In the, in the catacombs of, in the catacombs of Quantico. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We should send this <laughs> to Colonel. It's, that's a song title and a half. <laughs> catacombs <laughs> of Quantico. <laughs> no. right, but anyway, so yeah, so, you know, that's how I gained an, an interest and started playing bass. And then the whole California thing happened, and then, and then there I was, I was born. And then uh, when I got out to California, I guess, the dudes heard me jam in my room, and then we had a meeting at IHOP. I oh, specifically wow. remember it, uh, and they were like, uh, yeah, yeah. "It's like Michael Jordan playing baseball. You need to play a guitar." <laughs> so I was like, "Okay, well, take a vote. I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to, you know, be involved in it. You know, you guys take your vote." And then, uh, and, and it passed. So there became my role, and it was full time after that. Uh, full time get fiddle for me. Uh, my name is Brad Cox, aka Curly McStache, and I play the uh, the ass trumpet, at least at the moment. Other than that, I play bass. <laughs> I was surfing on the Craigslist one day. That's my list. <laughs> yeah, this is guy's list. list. I was surfing on the Craigslist, and it was like, Quang's tour and metal band needs a bassist. And I was like, oh, I've played metal bass in like two years. <laughs> and so, yeah, I had him up, and Brandon hit me up, and went from there, and started jamming with these guys. And this has been like, what, like three months now? Yeah, I was really nervous about it when I first tried out for the band, but you know, it's I guess obvious to come when you're going to hang out with four dudes in an established band already and like you're just jumping in. But no, I mixed real good with these guys. They're, they're pretty, pretty fucking awesome dudes. I only really knew Craig, the Quang, you know, um, and at that point, I mean, me and him talked about pretty much everything music every day at Best Buy, you know, um, and I started showing him my stuff. You know, and he and he started showing me some of his stuff, and you know, we just talked about you know maybe just jamming one day, you know, and um, the more we talked about it, it, was like, hey, you know, you're kind of a, a good musician, you know, we're looking for a bass player, you know, and, and and then it all just kind of snowballed from there. But um, yeah, I mean, I, but once I met the dudes, you know, and I started laying down some of their stuff, you know, because I, I I initially started out as just recording um, some of their stuff for them, you know, so Sam could. <clears throat> familiarize himself with the uh, with the cuts, you know, so he could come to the band and um, really, I guess, try to win the position that he did. But um, once I started really learning the songs and getting around the guys, you know, it just kind of felt good, you know. It kind of felt like it uh, worked, and you know, I took a I took a, a personal, genuine interest in it, and um, I think it showed. It was just. It was difficult to read everybody because everybody had different backgrounds, everybody came from different things. Not just musically, but everything from like just where where you're from, how you're raised, everything. So it was just like um it was it, it took a while to actually find who we who we were 
yeah. and how, how we got our niche. But I think honestly, where it all like magnetized together definitely was you know when we were doing the album in Massachusetts. Yeah, that that brought everything. That brought like the the music together. It brought us as a band, as people, yeah. as friends, like everything. Like, well, I've heard Craig say before. You know, I think I think trumpet formed. Yeah. I think he's right. Trumpet formed in Massachusetts. You know, that's where we really found. But you know, we did through the recording process. Even though everything, I, I mentioned the term eclectic because I think that the I think the album is that. You know, there's so many different elements to it. It's very eclectic. Um, but through that, we found what we are. Uh, Matt had Matt had an absolute huge uh, play in this album, and because. Um, I mean, it's funny because you, you you go and you go into a dude's house and he's like, you know, I don't know who these clowns are, you know, and, and, and it's it's like it's that limbo. But what's funny is, I mean, instantly when we walked in the door, man, it was like welcome home type thing, you know, shirt off his back, you know, so that it automatically like let the door down and, and we could be us, and uh, and then and then when Matt, I could tell that there was a point when Matt let that door down, and then it was just like let's fucking do this. So we start. He he barely, he pretty much said jam. And so we played through all the songs, and he said, "Okay, do it again." Uh, and then he would stop us, uh, and so he basically popped that. I remember the moment. He, three songs in. Three songs in. He he walked right back into the next room and says, "Okay, we're rewriting all the shit." And I said, "Okay, I trust you." <laughs> you know, like I was like, I, "I trust that," because you know, when you play when you play a certain set of songs for almost a year, you get yeah. locked into the way that they sound. But um, Matt. Matt took him in a whole different direction to where, I mean, Matt's a master composer, you know, uh, and that's what's awesome about him, you know, he's like, he would instantly go, there's your hook, there's your hook, and, and he would capitalize on it, you know, so it was cool to see, uh, to see what he picked out of the songs, because, like I said, us being us, we get tunnel vision on some stuff, you know, and it's like, no, this should be here, this should be here, but he, he took him and, and, I mean, we did pre-pro on. We had. To, I remember we had to do pre-production on all the songs in two days. And and God bless you, dude. You had to lay down the drum tracks in two days, relearning them pretty yeah, much. Yeah. And you yeah. did. You know, you did a great job. You know, so it was just like, you know. I mean, not to mention we had to write four of them. You know. <laughs> so so, uh, you know, it was. But that was the fun part. It was like, okay, we're rewriting all the shit. Uh, so that was where the inspiration came from. Is that Matt got inspired, and. I, you could just see it on his face. Yeah. You know what I mean. And so um, he kind and, of had, a, he kind of got the same vision that we did. Exactly. Yeah. At this yeah. one moment, and it was uh, from then on, it was game on. It was let's go. It was full throttle. Drink full throttle. I had the most fun recording, probably Cavalcade because it took the least amount of work. <laughs> uh, Matt, once we got in, we played all the songs. Matt, like. He produced the album. He took the songs and he stripped them down. And he said, "This is your hook. This is good. Try this. Change that." And it was a lot of work. And I was playing drums for 15 or 16 hours a day, and, uh, and to the point where the meat in my hands actually started to hurt because we only had two, a little over two weeks to do what most people have two, three months to do. Um, so I guess that was probably the most fun. Was the the easy stuff. Uh, recording was definitely a challenge for me. Uh, the way in which we recorded what was different for me. It was, you know, I don't know if I want to give away secrets of how we recorded it, but it was, there was, there was no, uh, no notes could be hidden behind the distortion or anything such as that. Uh, you, you had to be spot on. Uh, it had to match up note for note, and if it didn't, it was recorded again. Um, Curtis and I switched off parts to make sure it matched up, to make sure the same hand was playing the same riff. Uh, so it was definitely a challenge. Uh, the most fun I had um, was really a whole of it. I mean, there's, there's not one riff or one song that made me more excited to play. Um, hearing the songs come together more was, was what I got excited about, was hearing the changes we made and the new riffs, uh, the new arrangements, and, and just getting closer to hearing what the song had become over a long period was, was more exciting than what I was playing. From an emotional standpoint, um, I would say that probably the Amana Marthy solo, or I guess the Distance Through Perpetual Motion, is that what it's called, Sam? 
the distance to perpetual motion. Like I nailed it. Um, <clears throat> that one has a lot of emotion because it's a very it's a very big climax. You know, it's it's almost like the just like the end of this uh, the end of this massive war. Uh, but my favorite solo to play, like as far as like not just listening to, but just to be able to execute, uh, would probably be the solo to Neo Thrash, which I don't know what, what it's called. What's the song called? What's Neo called? Um, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> just not right now. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be, it's smack dab in the middle of the album. Uh, and the reason I like that, that or the reason I like the solo the best is because it's, it, it tells a story. There is a beginning, a middle, and an end to that solo. Um, because there's the very end where it just can't go anymore, and it's triumph. Um, and that's what that's what a good solo is to me, is telling a story. A beginning, a middle, and an end. So, probably those two. Uh, Distance Through Perpetual Motion and uh, Neo Thrash. So, I would say with this, with this album, there was a general thesis with uh, a lot of... Uh, cleaning the slate, overcoming things, um, dealing with the pessimistic side of life. Uh, so there's a lot of positivity in the negativity you would assume that comes in the metal. The song I'm most attached to would probably be the song I'm most fun recording because I feel most attached to it. And the song I'm most attached to would be The Complicated Convention. And the reason being is because... Uh, <laughs> it's weird because most of the lyrics aren't really the whole metal thing where it's like... Brr, 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 Satan or blah blah blah, let's blah 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 blah. And this is more with um, me having to... Uh, deal with um, having to put my dog down. And... Um, how that affected me. I know it sounds more of a pussy thing to say, but um, people who know me, people who know whatever, know how much of an impact that was in my life. It feels good to know that um, when you feel a certain way lyrically, you've got that musically to kind of back it up. Curtis was recording something during the, during the recording process, Curtis was doing something and he got a text and, and, and had to stop, you know, as soon as the take was over and read it, and it just said, hurt team. It was, <laughs> it was for Matt. <laughs> I don't know, I, I guess maybe not a particular song, but one of my favorite things, I'll never forget it. Uh, Matt was like, Matt was like, well, you know, this is a fucking metal band, so um, there's gonna be a solo in every single song. He's like, I think I count two solos right now. I think there's gonna there should be a solo in every song. This is a metal band, and how he challenged me was, um, okay, <laughs> well, basically I'm gonna hit the space bar. I'm gonna walk away, and if you don't have a solo written in 20 minutes, you're gonna do a shot. And as you all probably see, that I hate doing shots. I can't stand shots. Go one. It's gonna taste like we could line up for Get it. Get it. Get it. It was motivation, but it was awesome to see how he could push me and uh, figure out what I could come with on the spot. So a lot of the solos that you hear on the record um, are improv, for the most part. I think Matt was was one of, one of the biggest one of the biggest shifts on the album because we had we had we obviously had something in mind, and Matt knew it when he heard it and took it and and you know. Uh, he, he, he knows, he, he definitely, like I said, I don't really know much he, else of... He, he got he, us when we were trying to figure out us. Yeah, exactly. And I think by that, I mean, it got us to realize I've, who we were. I've heard Craig say it before, and I, I agree 100%. I mean, you know, we were a band before that, but Trump with the Harlot formed in Matt's basement. Yeah. Trump with the Harlot formed in Massachusetts in Matt's basement. Yeah. And, and, and that's 100% correct, because we, 
Uh, we all came together, and, and that was the best two weeks of my life, you know. Um, Except for the yeah, because like I said, this is my island. You're oh, that was a dagger. <laughs> but you know, you got you got you got fifteen hours a day. But you know, it was like okay, uh, we're gonna Matt's quote, I believe, is we're gonna work smart, not hard. <clears throat> Diverse. Exactly, and that's and that goes back to uh, don't expect anything <laughs> because. Uh, you know, the first, the first track right out of the gate, you're going to go, this is a metal album, you know, uh, but that's what I love about it. Uh, we went into Massachusetts with what, maybe six songs came out with, uh, nine total, like, you know, cover to cover. Ten, yeah, we had ten, 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 right. We had six, like, that were, we <clears throat> felt were solid. And right. We had some ideas, but then we went and... And that was, and that was the fun, up. that was the fun about it, you know, like, we didn't, we didn't know what to expect. You know, we, uh, we, we went in... With kind of we went we went with kind of an idea of where we wanted to go with about three or four more songs. Yeah. Um, you know, I brought a couple things to Matt and, and Matt dug it, you know, and, and lo and behold they end up there. Um, but it, it was just cool to see uh, where you know, what bloomed, I guess. Well because, Matt produced. He did, you know, like right. legitimately it, oh, Matt songs strong. and Right, and and you know, like we you know, there was a song that that we, you know, had written uh, that we call the march, um, oh, yeah. but we we had written about I guess two and a half minutes of it, and uh, by the end of the by the I end was of in the, the hospital getting yeah. the stitches, and you guys came back like oh the song is done. I was like what yeah. the fuck? Yeah, by the end of the by the end of the session, you know it's, it's a it's a yeah. nine minute song or eight minute song, and it's my favorite track on the album. It's a good one. Uh, but you know uh, that that's half the fun is not knowing uh, what to expect when you go in to record those things because we had only in, we had to do in fifteen hours a day what most bands get to do in three months. You know we had to do it in two weeks. Um, you know, so we certainly, time was not on our side, and I think that actually helped at the end of the day because it, um, it achieved what I was going for, and, and, and it's that atmosphere, it's that you don't know what to expect because, like I said before, every track has its own identity, and it's really weird to think that because trumpet itself doesn't really, I think, I don't think we have an identity, man, We're you know, and, and, and that's what's weird about it, but it works, it just works. not having one, it is our yeah, because I think we all come from different backgrounds, exactly. and but it, it just it works well. Right, and it, and and that's what's that's what's uh, kept the drive going, and that's you know that's what's cool is you know every time we bring something to the table, it 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 sounds completely different, you know, and and it's funny to see it's funny to see the dance of going, uh, I don't know if that's gonna work or I'm not sure about that, but you know at the end of the day, uh, I think it's worked out pretty well. I just you know I wanted a title that was simple, and that just summed up summed everything up in one word and and i and i feel that vi that visceral and trumpet the harlot just hits you in your gut <laughs> I, I remember brandon what you were pushing for taste of infection because <laughs> that was like because i hawked a loser you're right yeah because it was winter time and you're like oh taste of infection and i was like nah <laughs> i was like kind of hurting it was just like i don't know it was just like it was just like taste of hurting taste of hurting no, Matt. Matt's the best. Hurting. 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 The way, the way Matt, Matt, and that's another thing that was awesome about the, the <sighs> recording process. Matt picked up on our lingo, and so by the end of the week, he's like, hurting, you know. Like, it's originally hurting, <laughs> but it somehow yeah. changed. But no, we came up there with the album, uh, we were, we came up with one that I thought it was like a, Wash Us All Away was what it was, and it was, uh, it had a concept of, kind of how, how, um, the band name was where it was supposed to be the whole clean slate it, um, but that apparently sounded too emo. So uh, we killed ourselves trying to figure something fucking out. Oh man, we did. And like then always. Yeah, and then um, Curtis came up with this role, um, kind of describing the way that we approach the music and we hope that it hits the people, um, wanting it to affect you more than just being something to play, like we don't want it to be background noise, yeah. uh, we're, we're playing it to not get you thinking necessarily, but do something to you, do something to you more than... Invoke emotion. Correct, yeah, don't, don't just tune it out and make any <clears throat> noise and, you know, we don't want you listening to it just to piss off your parents right. or, or fit in with somebody at school, we want you to listen to it to get something out of it, whatever that may be, whether it's you know, to make you, help you through a situation or 
make you want to pick up a guitar or play drums or or do something that you wouldn't do without it. Like there's a kid. There's a kid ass. in the garage right now who's nine years old who can just crush, you know, and just just face melt probably. You know, I want that kid to, to pick up visceral. Um, so I, I'm excited to see the. I'm excited to see the reaction because it's going to be. Um, it's it's a very polarizing album, you know. So uh, I don't know. I it, support it. I mean, Matt. Matt did an awesome job, and, so and, and we left his brothers, you know. So, geez, Mike. We we have the uh, we have the um, the distinct honor of, of playing something that I've always since I picked up a guitar knew what was uh, Metal Fest, the New England Hardcore or Metal uh -huh. Hardcore Festival. Uh, you know, so that's huge. My plans are just really to soak it all in. I'm not really worried about money or. Anything at this moment in time, this is like what I've wanted to do since I was like 14. Especially with New England Metal Fest coming up, like that's been like the one thing I've wanted to do my entire life playing music, is play New England Metal Fest, so. I don't know, just taking it one day at a time and we'll just see what happens. <laughs> I, I guess um, anybody who's ever seen me on any type of stage knows that uh, what I take seriously is, is having a good time. Is, is having a show. Making it a show. And by, but by the end of the song, all the kids in the front row were like pointing and whispering to each other, and they were all looking right at me. I was like, man, what are these guys looking at? And I started looking around, and I didn't see anything. I wiped my face, and there was a big streak of blood on my arm. And it turns out I ended up hitting my eyebrow um, with my drumstick and splitting it wide open. But there was blood spraying on I mean, it was metal. Kids loved it. I guess, my, I, I guess the biggest thing is that I would want someone who's never heard an ounce of metal to come to a trumpet show and literally enjoy themselves. Go, those dudes look like they're having legitimate fun. The song I like playing live the most is probably Lament, just because I really like the bass line in that song. I do a lot of different things to prep for a show. I um, like to dance a lot. I like to dance a lot. That's all I like to do is dance. I, have a, I just like to dance. Wherever I'm at, I like to dance. That's it. <laughs> That's how I grew up on first show. I just dance. I like to fucking dance. We're not the stereotypical metal band, and I don't think that we need to feed a certain machine that needs to be fed a certain stereotype, you know? Just because you play a certain thing, or so, you, so, so you write a certain thing, that means that you're fucking metal. I think it's how you portray yourself is what, what it is metal, and I think... Um, how we portray ourselves with that song, how we portray ourselves with all the other songs, lyrically, and how we stand and so forth, and how we play live, works out metal. You're there together. You're there together. I'm a little tipsy, but this doesn't mean I'm not answering these things ridiculously, but I'm being honest. I think that's what it is. It pretty much is, it's just a live thing. Our live show does really portray us because it portrays us at, at our most honest points in our lives and who we are as individuals and um, I think if you you want to really know who we are and everything it's a, it's our live show when we're playing live there's definitely something that happens when, when we when we uh, plug in and turn on we, we take ourselves seriously as a band as far as where we want to go what we want to achieve but not seriously as being so metal that it's not fun. We're random and goofy and don't care what anybody thinks. We're definitely not the typical metal band that you can judge by their cover. Because when people look at us, they never expect to hear what they do when the show's over. They are surprised to say the least. At what, at what they just heard and what happened. Um, and that's, that's really cool, is to change people's aspects of what they think metal is. So when we're on stage, something happens, and that's what's cool about this band. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really hard to describe what goes on, but uh, it's something you have to see to believe. There are some bands out there that are hanging. <laughs> And whether you agree or not agree with lyrics from whatever Slayer or Deicide or Cannibal Corpse or or anything like that, whether you agree or disagree, it's fucking genuine. 
and you can feel that passion coming out, whether it be a negative thing to you or a positive thing to you, it's honest. And I think that, that there's a lack of honesty that's out in music these days. And I'm hoping that Trumpet the Harlot can have at least affect to bring back a little bit of honesty. I mean, music goes in cycles. You get that where bands start to sound the same. And, you know, one CD sounds like every other band that's on tour with them. And it sounds like one really big, long song. And I think that we don't sound like that at all. A lot of bands say that, so I guess our music will speak for itself. But I think that we have an opportunity to kind of help shift metal a little bit and help kids see that there's something else out there other than how low can you go on a, on a down tune D string and a China symbol. When you hear our music, and there's other bands out there, I'm not saying we're the only ones being original. When you hear a trumpet, you, you know it, it, it's, it's us. Um, there, there's definitely more thought put into our music. It, it's not mindless, it's not just for a scene. It, it, it. Alright, so I'm pretty laid back. Um, I mixed in pretty good with the guys. Um, I don't know, Brandon was pretty tense when I, I guess here, but like he, I guess he was talking about earlier, and he's learned his patience, and sometimes you gotta be patient, like when you're rubbing out a fat deuce out. I grew up with Craig, and then about a year before I got out of the Marines, I knew that I wanted to pursue music, so I drove to Nebraska, and drove Craig out here on a giant trailer, <laughs> and then, uh, with a truck behind it because it's with, so hairy thing. Right. <clears throat> and we ended up getting tattoos from Hybrid Tattoo and Woodbridge and Morgan just happened to be the, the artist that we landed with and we were talking about problems with the vocalist that we were having at the time. And he told us about the guy that he knew, Sam, <clears throat> said that he would fit our style well and that he was good and into it and was looking to move to California because we were looking to move to California at the time. So he hooked us up with Sam and uh, we invited Sam over to jam. So we started asking around. Craig was working with Curtis at Best Buy, and uh, yeah. so we got it's Curtis. Kind of a, and Curtis. Yeah, it's kind of a funny thing how I came to be because uh, you know I had I had, had aspirations to go to California in the first place to uh, to do some entertainment. Uh, yeah, I was working with the Quang over at Best Buy back when he was baby faced. Yeah, and uh, and he's like, yeah, well, you know, we need a bass player, and you're looking to move out to California anyway, and why don't you just jump ship with us and play some gigs on the way out, play bass temporarily. I was like, you know, I do my own recording, you know, and then that's actually how I gained an interest. I was like, well, why don't I just play bass on the demo? And then we, we cut a, we cut some tracks at, in the barracks um, at Quantico. I was, I was on restriction. I got a little <laughs> bit of trouble, and I couldn't leave the barracks for a month. So, so we basically brought all of his recording gear in, and I liberated a few mattresses from the empty Yeah, that didn't rooms. suck at all, moving that stuff in and yeah. out. Yeah, we made a mini studio in the basement um, behind yeah. my CO's back. In the, in the catacombs of, in the catacombs of Quantico. Yeah. Yeah. We should send this to like Colonel. Song it's, that's a song title and a half. <laughs> catacombs <Yeah>. of Quantico. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But anyway, so yeah, so, you know, that's how I gained an, an interest and started playing bass. And then the whole California thing happened, and then, and then there I was. I was born. And then uh, when I got out to California, I guess... The dudes heard me jam in my room, and then we had a meeting at IHOP. I oh, specifically wow. remember it. Uh, and they were like, uh, yep, yep. it's like Michael Jordan playing baseball, and you need to play a guitar. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, take a vote. I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to, you know, be involved in it. You know, you guys take your vote. And then, uh, and, and it passed. So there became my role, and it was full-time after that. Uh, full-time get fiddle for me. Uh, my name is Brad Cox, a.k.a. Curly McStash, and I play the, uh, the ass trumpet. At least at the moment. Other than that, I play bass. <laughs> I was surfing on the Craigslist one day. That's my list. <laughs> and, and, yeah, this is guy's list. list. I was surfing on the Craigslist, and I was like, Quang's touring list. metal band needs a bassist. And I was like, oh, I've played metal bass in like two years. <laughs> and so, yeah, I had him up, and Brandon hit me up, and we went from there. and started jamming with these guys, and this has been like, what, like three months now? Yeah, I was really nervous about it when I first tried out for the band, but you know, it's I guess obvious to come when you're going to hang out with four dudes in an established band already and like you're just jumping in. But no, I mixed real good with these guys. They're, they're, pretty, they're pretty fucking awesome dudes. I only really knew Craig, the Quang, you know, um, and at that point, I mean, me and him talked about pretty much everything music every day at Best Buy. 
you know, um, and I started showing him my stuff, you know, and he, and he started showing me some of his stuff and, you know, we just talked about, you know, maybe just jamming one day, you know, and, um, the more we talked about it, it was like, Hey, you know, you're kind of a, a good musician, you know, we're looking for a bass player, you know, and, and, and then it all just kind of snowballed from there. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, but once I met the dudes, you know, and I started laying down some of their stuff, you know, cause I, I, I initially started out as just recording, um, some of their stuff for them, you know, so Sam could <clears throat> familiarize himself with the, uh, with the cuts, you know, so he could come to the band and, um, really, I guess, try to win the position that he did. But, um, once I started really learning the songs and getting around the guys, you know, it just kind of felt good, you know, it kind of felt like it, uh, worked. And, you know, I took a, I took a, a personal, genuine interest in it, and, um, I think it showed. It was just... It was difficult to read everybody because everybody had different backgrounds. Everybody came from different things—not just musically, but everything from like just where where you're from, how you're raised, everything. So it was just like um, it was. It, it took a while to actually find who we who we were yeah. and how, how we got our niche. But I think honestly, where it all like magnetized together definitely was you know when we, we were doing the album we, in we, Massachusetts. Yeah. That that brought everything. That I, brought like the the music together. It brought us as a band as people. Yeah. As friends. Like everything like Well I've heard Craig say before, you know, I think I think Trumpet formed yeah. I think he's right, Trumpet formed in Massachusetts. You know, that's where we really found. But you know, we did through the recording process, even though everything I, I mentioned the term eclectic because I think that the I think the album is that, you know, there's so many different elements to it. It's very eclectic. Um but through that, we found what we are. Uh, Matt had, Matt had an absolute huge uh, play in this album, and because um, I mean it's funny because you, you you go.